What does it mean to be immune compromised? If you have asthma and use a steroid inhaler, are you immune compromised? What if you have diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis? As we move into fall, it will become increasingly common for people who are immune compromised to be offered a third dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. So in this video, I'm going to answer those questions and give you a definition of who exactly is considered to be immune compromised and might want to consider a third dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. With all the conversation about COVID-19 booster doses in the news, I've been getting some questions about who exactly is immune compromised. A person who is immune compromised may have a less than adequate response to vaccination. They may be more predisposed to severe illness than someone who is not immune compromised. In the news recently, we are seeing that places like Israel, Germany, the United States, and now even Canada are talking about a third vaccine booster dose because of the highly transmissible Delta variant. We are seeing that the vaccines are still very effective at preventing severe disease, hospitalization, and death in most people. However, the United States is really struggling as the Delta variant rips through different parts of the country. Many people are still unvaccinated, and those who are vaccinated with that smaller dosing interval, we are starting to see evidence that their immunity is waning. Now, the vaccines are still quite protective, and they are definitely still worth getting in order to prevent severe infection from SARS-CoV-2, but it's worth discussing who exactly is immune compromised, who might really want to be considering a third dose of vaccine as we head into fall. And not only that, maybe you want to be also thinking about the flu vaccine, or in some cases, even the high dose flu vaccine that we give here in Canada for those ages 65 and over. And so the definition of who is immune compromised who is more susceptible to more severe disease, not just to COVID-19, but to other respiratory viruses and illnesses is something that applies to the information that I'm going to tell you. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you some non-drug, non-vaccine measures for how you can protect yourself and your family from SARS-CoV-2 and other viruses and illnesses as we head into the fall and winter months. So make sure you stick around for that as well. When we talk about vaccination, it's also important to remember that this pandemic will not be over for anyone until it is over for everyone. So as much as it's great if there is vaccine in abundance, there are many places in the world that hardly have started their vaccination programs. If you look at Canada, the United Kingdom and the United States, they have a large percentage of people who are fully vaccinated. However, look at countries that have really struggled during the pandemic, like Brazil, like India. Look at where Australia is. And I put Haiti here on the graph as well, just so we have an idea. And so vaccinating the United States or vaccinating the UK and vaccinating Canada with second doses, third doses is not going to solve this. We really need to think about this globally. So who are the immunocompromised? Who are we speaking of when we say immunocompromised? One of the ways we can look at an immunocompromised population is by the types of treatment that they are receiving. So if you or a family member of yours is currently being treated with one of these medications, there is a high chance that they are immune compromised and they should consider a third dose. You should also be vaccinated yourself fully in order to protect them. The following medications can cause a person to become immunocompromised. High dose corticosteroids, for example, 20 milligrams or more of prednisone daily. Alkylating agents, such as the alkylating agents seen here. Anti-metabolites, methotrexate being one of them. Some people are on methotrexate for rheumatoid arthritis or other autoimmune conditions. Transplant-related immunosuppressive medications. Cancer chemotherapeutic agents classified as severely immunosuppressive. Tumoral necrosis factor blockers. Examples of these are Humira and Remicade and other biologics that are immunosuppressive or immunomodulatory. Now there are groups of people that are considered to be immunocompromised. And so we will look at this as far as groups of people now. Populations who are considered immunocompromised include people undergoing treatment for solid tumor and hematologic malignancies, in other words, cancers, 
solid organ transplant recipients who are taking immunosuppressive therapy, those with HIV infection, those with moderate or severe primary immunodeficiency, and those who have received CART cell or hematopoietic stem cell transplants within two years of transplantation or taking immunosuppressive therapy. So why should people who are immune compromised consider a third dose of vaccine? Because their bodies are not able to mount an adequate immune response. They do not have adequate protection from severe disease, hospitalization, and death from SARS-CoV-2. So as promised, I'm going to give you some non-vaccine, non-drug measures to protect yourself and your family from other respiratory viruses, including SARS-CoV-2, as we move into the fall and winter months. What can you do? Upgrade your mask. At this point, the Delta variant is extremely transmissible. An N95 mask is preferred. If not, please double mask when you are in any indoor public space or with anyone who is not vaccinated. Also, add a HEPA filter to your space. I just did a video on this about a HEPA filter that I recently purchased for our home, and I'll put the link right up here. You can have a look. Open the windows, even just a few inches. You really need to get some airflow through your home or through your workspace, wherever you are. Ventilation is key in helping to reduce viral load. Run an HVAC system with more outdoor air than indoor air. Avoid recirculating indoor air. You really want the indoor air to get out and fresh air to be able to come in. Use masks whenever you are around anyone who is immunocompromised or unvaccinated. And this includes children who are under the age of 12 and cannot be vaccinated. We are seeing more and more hospitalizations of children in the US. Masking helps to reduce the viral load. It reduces the exposure both of yourself and of those who are unvaccinated and are around you. Lastly, as we head into the fall and winter months, we get less sunshine. We also tend to head indoors and congregate. Vitamin D, exercise, good nutrition with whole foods that you can prepare yourself are essential. These will help you and your family stay healthier as we get through this winter with this virus and other viruses that will be circulating. I hope you found this helpful and I hope that now you have a good definition of what exactly it is to be immune compromised. If you are asthmatic and you use an inhaler, that does not mean that you are immune compromised. If you are diabetic and you are not on any of the medications that were listed, that does not mean that you need a third dose at this time. If you have rheumatoid arthritis and you are on a biologic that I listed, speak with your healthcare provider and see if a third dose would be recommended for you. I'll keep you updated on this as we go. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.